I was a tomboy. I was outside all day. I built dozens and dozens and dozens of forts. We were just outside all the time. One of those kids that got on a bike at nine in the morning on a summer day and came home just in time for dinner. It feels like a cliche to say, you know, my source of inspiration is nature. I have reverence for nature. I would say that's the word is reverence. I really feel like mother nature has solved most problems. And so I just think it's infinitely inspiring. Oh, that's really, really pretty. See, these ferns are curling on the ends. I, oh my gosh, I've never seen that. I bet it's only gonna last one day. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try and photograph this, but there's a possibility if I snip a, a frond that they'll like go limp as soon as I do. That's crazy pretty. I really got into photography when, um, in college when I was given a SLR camera. And then I started doing visual journaling, sort of like sketching, collaging. Sugar, sugar wrappers in France, ca French cafes. <laughs> so it just slowly added as the kids got older and I got more free time, I could add more and more creative outlets to my life. I don't know if I want to do that. Ooh, that's good. Steve and I, my husband Steve, we've always thought that we would retire into a creative career. He's always had ambitions to be a writer. I always had ambitions to be a photographer, visual artist, collage artist, or painter. We would sort of set ourselves up. We'd prepare to be creative in our, in our retirement. A lot of people were doing these project a days and they're very popular and they've launched tons of artists. Um, and I thought, I want to do something like that. It didn't take long to look around my house and see, you know, you know, the bowl full of rocks from Lake Superior and the bowl full of sea glass from the Mediterranean. Without even realizing it, that I was a nature collector, what I collect is nature. Color family. Some nice shadows, I think, actually. Give it some depth. I just feel like there's too much stimulus today. There's too much stuff coming in. There's too much advertising and too much color and it's too loud and it's too bright. So for me still was this quiet place, you know, it's white on white, it's very quiet. You look at one thing, it's usually floating on the white background because I, you know, I just wanted it to be calm and people have responded to that. It's a quirky nature blog from Shoreview, Minnesota, but it hit a nerve, it hit a zeitgeist that people like the calm of the images. Seed pods and bugs. And this is what I call delicate bits. Yeah, eucalyptus seed pods. These are from wild grapevines here. Beetle-eaten leaves, sometimes called skeleton leaves. My process can be repeated, but my portfolio can't now. Those ferns that we just photographed today with their little droopy tips, I, I've never seen that before. I may not see it again, you know. Jack, Jack, good boy, good boy. The blog has been an absolute life enhancer. Like I can, I can take my walk in the morning, I can photograph my subject in the afternoon and I can edit it at night. And I think, that's part of the reason the daily blog challenge became a life enhancer because it never became a life detractor. It never got in the way. I did it as a creative challenge. It was to have a creative exercise so I could grow as an artist. But what happened, what I did not expect is that it became part of our family lifestyle. The whole family, we're all naturalists now. when I'm creating, I can get into deep play where I can lift up my head and two hours have gone by and it felt like a minute. I can imagine doing this forever because nature is infinitely varied and I won't ever exhaust it and it's not, it won't get boring. I could study it, I could photograph it, I could document it for the rest of my life. What you find? What you find?